So, what is Has Been Hotel? If you're like myself and you're the wrong side of 20, you might only have heard of Has Been Hotel. Well, I decided to sit down with people younger than me, my younger brother, to try and learn what this new craze is all about. Which then turned out to not be a new craze and it's already existed for like four years. So, as I just mentioned, the original Has Been Hotel pilot came out on a YouTube channel known as Vivzy Pop on the 28th of October 2019, which then puts me on the correct side of 20. Man, I guess I just missed this. Collecting a staggering 96 million views as of recording, this pilot was adored by fans. Presented by Spindlehorse, the pilot opens up with a song about hell. More specifically, what happens. It is also during this first song, we are introduced to the quote unquote main character of Has Been Hotel, Charlie Morningstar, daughter of Lucifer Morningstar and Lilith, the first wife of Adam, as in Adam and Eve, from the book of Isaiah. We learn that this world goes through an extermination once every year where angels from heaven come down to reduce the overpopulation in hell. And as I'm always chasing rainbows, sang by Charlie Morningstar herself, comes to a close, we meet Angel Dust. Leaving a stranger's car after having a meeting is what we will call it, so I don't get demonetized. And we find out that he's actually named after a drug. Now the pilot does move quite quickly to try and introduce all of the characters, so next we meet Serpentius, a snake that has some eggs as minions? Which I imagine comes from the fact that snakes eat eggs, I'm just not sure where the design choice is for him using machinery, other than it being cool as fuck. And as I just mentioned, the pilot is going extremely fast, so we then quickly get introduced to Cherry Bomb, who is a rival to Serpentius, but also Serpentius kinda likes her, kinda has this crush thing on her? But, you know, we'll get into that later. Swiftly, we are moved on to Triple Six News, hosted by Katie Killjoy and Tom Trench. Where we learn that because of the recent extermination, a lot of territory is up for grabs in Pentagram City, where demons are duking it out to increase their own territory and standing. After we learn this, Katie Killjoy informs us that they have an exclusive interview with Charlie Morningstar. Ooh, I wonder what it's about. It's, it's about the hotel. She's here to explain the hotel to the denizens of hell. We are then introduced to Vaggie, Charlie's girlfriend and emotional support, who warns her that it's probably not the best idea to sing on national television to the creatures and people of hell. And the second the interview goes live, she actually doesn't sing and sits and explains what the hotel is going to be. It's a place where souls can go and reform themselves to gain access into heaven, which leads her to be met with a very long, awkward silence. So what's the best response when your idea totally flops on live television and everyone hits you with the huh? Well, sing, of course. Introducing us to the second song of the show, Inside of Every Demon is a Rainbow, sang once again by Charlie Morningstar. Though it is not Charlie's voice actress, Jill Harris doing the singing, but instead, Elsie Lovelock, which is just such a cool name. This song gives early 2000s Cartoon Network intro vibes. It's also reasonable to say it kind of sounds like the Big Bang Theory intro. No, all jokes aside, it's actually a really good song, if not a little bit quick and sometimes difficult to understand. And the animation that goes alongside this song is gorgeous. Unluckily for Charlie, she doesn't quite land the target audience she was hoping for, and everyone laughs at her. And this is when we learn that the hotel already has a resident trying to do better and make their way into heaven, showing that it kind of works. That resident being none other than previously introduced Angel Dust, who is fighting other demons for territory and not reforming. Oh fuck. Cutting to Charlie, Vaggie and Angel Dust in the back of their Uber from hell, they get into a little bit of an argument, being as though Angel Dust is kind of proving everything they're working towards wrong. And during this argument, an interesting point is brought up. If Vaggy was to try kill Angel Dust, would he die and then go to double hell? Well, according to my extensive research, otherwise known as asking my little brother, 
he told me that demons can't die unless it's from an angelic weapon, which also cleared up my question of if they don't die, then how does the cleansing even work? But that explanation makes it make sense and we're all on the same page again. The explanation comes from a sister series of Has Been Hotel known as Hell of a Boss. And now that we're back at the hotel, Charlie is extremely bummed out that her grand idea is failing in front of her eyes. So she calls her mom for advice and is sent straight to voicemail. Though this seems like the norm for her as she doesn't act surprised. And then suddenly, without warning, Alistair the radio demon shows up at the hotel, offering to actually help run the hotel. Though if you've kept a beady eye during the pilot, you'll actually notice that he has been stalking Charlie scene through scene. We then get a very well-worded exposition dump from Vaggy explaining who the radio demon is. Though again, to not be demonetized, here is a very poorly dubbed over version of it. The radio demon, one of the most powerful beings hell has ever seen. Decades ago, Alistair manifested in hell, seemingly overnight. He began to topple overlords who had been dominant for centuries. That kind of raw power had never been harnessed by a mortal soul before. Then he broadcast his carnage all throughout hell, just so everyone could witness his ability. Sinners started calling him the Radio Demon. And now that that explanation is out of the way, Charlie and Alistair make a not-so-deal deal. They make a verbal pact instead of a handshakey pact. So, you know, nobody has leniency over each other's souls. Alistair calls in a few favors and brings some more staff to the hotel, where we're introduced to Nifty, a soul from the 1950s that loves cleaning. So she gets straight to work cleaning up the hotel that honestly is kind of a shit tip. And the last main character to be introduced is Husk, or as Alistair calls him, Husker a once demon lord that has a pretty rough gambling addiction and ended up gambling away all of his power to Alistair. And so now he's forced to be the receptionist slash bartender of the Happy Hotel. Yes, while re-watching it just now, I remembered that it's actually called the Happy Hotel, not the Has Been Hotel, until the end of the pilot. We are then blessed with a jazzy upbeat tune sang by Alistair, though not the voice of Alistair, Ed Bosco, but instead performed by Gabriel Brown. And again, the part that is a music video is animated so beautifully. It is, it's very, it, it's mind blowing. And speaking of blowing, nope, that's not a turn of phrase I should use when mentioning this show. The wall explodes as Serpentius tries to destroy the hotel. Oh well, to be more specific, he's trying to take revenge on Alistair for many previous defeats. Which goes terribly, as the fight between Alistair and Serpentius lasts precisely 30 seconds, with Alistair taking zero damage and Serpentius exploding. And as the camera pans up to the hotel's logo, we see it get changed from Happy Hotel to Has Been Hotel, and Alistair hits us with a wonderful, stay tuned. Well, that was four years ago. And so now we enter the dark times. The time in between the 28th of October, 2019 and the 19th of January, 2024. But the dark times were not completely empty as during the time between the pilot and the first episode on Amazon Prime, there was the creation of Honeycast, a podcast led by Ashley Nichols, who is a cleanup artist from the Has Been Pilot. It's in these podcasts that the fan base got a lot of world building and story building of Has Been Hotel, as a lot of the main cast voice actors and Vivian herself show up on multiple episodes of this podcast. And the fan base weren't left completely out in open water, as Hell of a Boss season one and season two both got released during the gap between the Has Been Hotel pilot and its episode one. And now on to the dark moments of the dark times. The recast. A pretty controversial topic for the fan base who fell in love with the characters, the main ensemble of the show 
got recast. As an ex-voice actor myself, who also got recast, I can understand that it kinda sucks, but it's just business. There's no hard feelings between anything or anyone. So, I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes kind of giving an overview as to who got replaced by who and where you might hear the old voices again. The voice actress for Charlie, Jill Harris, you'll be able to hear as Fern in Freerin, which did just blow my fucking mind. And the singer for Charlie, Elsie Lovelock, you will be able to hear in Murder Drones. The voice replacing those two is Erica Henningsen, who you may know from Fright Creewy. Vaggie's voice actress, Monica Franco, you'll be able to hear in some episodes of Hell of a Boss. And they have been replaced by Stephanie Beatrice, who you may know from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The original voice for Angel Dust, Michael Kovac, can now be heard as Jax in The Amazing Digital Circus. And the new voice for Angel Dust is Blake Roman, who you may know from Blue Bloods. The voice for Alistair, Edward Bosco, you will now be able to hear in Lego Fortnite? And Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Lego Fortnite? There's a voice in that? And the singing voice of Alistair, Gabriel Brown, can now be found on the YouTube channel Black Griffin. The original voice of Nifty, Michelle Marie, can now be heard in Undead Unluck and Zom 100? Fuck yeah! And the new voice of Nifty is played by Kimiko Glenn, who you may know as Penny Parker from Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spire. Fucking everyone's so cool. The original voice of Husk, Mick Lauer, can be heard in Delicious in Dungeon and is being replaced by Keith David, who you may know from Rick and Morty as the president. And yes, while I am talking about all of this information, I don't want any hate to go towards any of these incredible, incredible people. In the industry, people get replaced. It's just what happens. I hold no opinion towards the previous or the new voice cast. I just think they all did a wonderful job. Now the dark times to one side, we can get into the actual show. The show that people waited four years for. The show that's still being released as of recording this. That's right, just before we actually get into season one, something got released the exact same day. A song titled Thank You and Goodbye popped up on the Black Griffin YouTube channel. As the title suggests, it is a farewell song from the original cast to the fans. Or, as Gabriel Brown puts it himself, a passing of the torch from the pilot cast of Has Been to the incredible new voice cast that will carry the show into the future. And honestly, taking myself off script, this song is just gorgeous. I understand why in the comments people are saying, bro, this made me cry and thank you so much, you're gonna be missed, etc, etc. It is such a wholesome love letter to the original cast and the original fans who stuck with them since day one. Okay, now we can finally get into the Amazon original version of Has Been Hotel. Episode 1, titled Overture, which is an orchestral piece at the beginning of an opera play or etc. Yes, I did look that up. We start with Alistair showing an advertisement that he's made for the hotel. But it's kind of, well, shit. This makes it look, um... Bad. So Charlie wants to make another one, but she has to go out to the office of heaven. Splitting episode one into two storylines going on simultaneously. The crew trying to make an advert, and Charlie trying to deal with heaven. So starting out with the advertising crew, Vaggie takes it upon herself to make a new advert, which goes fucking terribly. The first one was bad, and this one is infinitely worse. So she strikes a deal with Alistair to make a wonderful advertisement, in exchange that he never touches the TV bullshit ever again. You know, because he's the radio demon. And now onto the big plot point of this episode, Charlie goes to deal with heaven. In the Embassy of Heaven, Charlie meets with Adam, as she wishes to push forward her idea of souls being redeemed. Adam, being basically a demon himself, 
takes none of this and hates the idea. In fact, hates the idea so much that he reduces the wait time of the next extermination from one year to six months. We also learn that it's not just because of this. The main reason he wants the extermination to happen in six months is because one of the angels under Adam died in the last extermination. Which, I mean, it should be impossible. So Adam is very fucking pissed, and that's the end of the meeting. And basically the end of the episode as well, as Charlie goes back to the hotel and finds out that the advert is really nice. And to stop the copyright gods beating my ass, I will just name the songs that appear in each episode, instead of actually playing them and reviewing them. So, the two songs to appear in episode 1 are named Happy Day in Hell and Hell is Forever. Episode 2, titled Radio Killed the Video Star, is a reference to Video Killed the Radio Star by Bruce Woolley. The episode starts out with Sir Pentius showing back up and challenging Alistair to a fight, which again goes about as poorly as it did in the pilot, with Alistair severely beating his ass. However, at the end of the fight, Sir Pentius manages to tear a small piece of Alistair's coat, which makes him very fucking mad, and he goes off to the tailors. During this time, we're introduced to the V's, Valentino, Vox, and Velvet. Vox is sent by Velvet to go calm down Valentino, because Angel Dust isn't showing up for work. And Valentino informs Vox that Alistair, the radio demon, has returned. Which greatly upsets Vox, as they are both media demons, one being of radio and the other being of video. So, Vox releases a TV show to inform all of hell that Alistair has returned. And at the same time, Alistair begins broadcasting his radio show once again. After Alistair's radio show overpowers Vox, he returns to the hotel in his brand new old suit. By that I mean, the suit looks the exact same. And at the same time, Sir Pentius reappears, but not for a round two. He wants to join the hotel to try be redeemed. But then very swiftly we learn that he's actually spying for the V's. So he gets kicked out, except not really, because then he's straight back to actually be redeemed. Good old Charlie. And that is the end of episode two. The songs that appear in episode two are Stayed Gone, and it starts with Sorry. Episode three, titled Scrambled Eggs, referencing the food, sees Sir Pentius going through the rehab of the hotel where Vaggy informs him that he cannot continue to buy weapons of mass destruction from Camilla Carmine, one of the overlords. And so, to truly show that he's trying to make a change for himself, he agrees to let his egg minions go, to which Alistair takes them away from him, and kind of uses them as his own minions for a while. And it's here where the main character of the episode shifts from Sir Pentius to Alistair, as we follow him on his day-to-day -day life where he happens to bump into his old friend, Zestiel, another one of these overlords, as they're actually all going to an overlord's meeting. So as they get in the elevator, Alistair shoos away the other eggs, apart from one doesn't quite get the memo. This one is named Frank. Trust me, Frank is important. And it's during this meeting where we're introduced to many of the other overlords of hell. Now, not all of them are named, but I will try my best. We have, of course, Alistair, Rosie, Vox, though he's not there, Valentino, though he is also not there, Velvet, Camilla Carmine, Zestiel, one called Zizi, and then the rest happen to be unnamed as of recording. And it's during this meeting we find out that Velvet knows of the dead angel and suspects that it might be Carmine. For as an overlord that specializes in weapons manufacturing, she's very scared to go to war with heaven, so, after the meeting, Alistair tells Frank the Egg to go spy on Carmine, where it is revealed that yes indeed, she was the one that killed the angel. And that is the end of episode 3, with Respectless and Whatever It Takes being the two songs of this episode. Episode 4, titled Masquerade, refers to the masks that each character wears while talking to each other and eventually being dropped by the end of the episode. I will say that this episode does have some heavy themes, specifically mental and physical abuse, as well as drug usage. I personally will be skirting around those subjects, but mentioning them lightly or briefly. However, if any of those make you feel uncomfortable, please skip to the time on screen now. Episode 4 revolves around Angel Dust and his contract with Valentino. 
More specifically, how Angel just doesn't like working for Valentino, as he makes him feel inferior and degraded. So, after a rather intense day at work, Angel Dust decides to go out onto the town to drink all of his troubles away, where Husk decides to follow him to keep him out of trouble. And after some fighting and some songs, Husk reveals that he too was once an overlord, but gambled all of his power away to Alistair. So while not the exact same, he does understand and he himself has been in a similar boat. So they bond and become quite good friends after this episode. And that is the end of episode 4. The songs in this episode are titled Poison and Loser Baby. Episode 5, titled Dad Beat Dad, a play on the phrase Dead Beat Dad, starts the episode with everyone in low spirits, as now there is only one month until the next extermination, and not a single soul has been redeemed, making the whole thing seem impossible. So, Charlie decides to call her dad Lucifer for advice. And this is where we meet King of Hell himself, Lucifer, who happens to be an inventor and is making rubber ducks? I'm sure it makes sense to someone. After agreeing and quickly showing up at the hotel, he's introduced to everyone, where Lucifer and Alistair find out that they have this dislike towards each other, as both of them see themselves as Charlie's father figure. So, to keep tensions between these two low, Lucifer decides to go on a tour of the hotel, when a new character is introduced, called Mimsy, someone that Alistair knew from their time alive. Husk then goes to warn Alistair about Mimsy, knowing that she only ever shows up when she wants something from him, to which Alistair reminds him to stay in his lane and not tug on his leash too much, with Husk responding in a hushed tone that he himself is on a leash, which gets my theory brain going, like who is in control of Alistair, this guy that we've seen to be so powerful? It's, um, interesting. And while the tour continues, we find out that Husk was completely right, as Mimsy is actually being tracked down by some loan sharks, so Alistair has to go out of his way to deal with it, and forces Mimsy to leave. And after the tour, and a very good heart-to-heart -heart between Charlie and Lucifer, Lucifer agrees to try give Charlie a meeting with Heaven, so she can explain what her plan is, and hope that Heaven can help her with her goals. And so, episode 5 ends with Charlie and Vaggy packing their bags ready to go on holiday to heaven! And the songs in episode 5 are titled Hell's Greatest Dad and More Than Anything. Episode 6, titled Welcome to Heaven, doesn't reference anything as far as I'm aware. Vaggy and Charlie arrive at the pearly gates of heaven, where they are met by Saint Peter, who doesn't find their names on the list because they're not dead. Well, they are, but they're not supposed to be there. And that is where we meet the head Seraphim, who allows them to come into heaven for the meeting. While in the meeting, Vaggy is confronted by Adam and Lute, who remind her that she herself was once an executioner, once an angel working for heaven to slay demons. Which, of course, perfectly riles her up just before the court meeting. And it's in this very meeting where we find Charlie asking the Council of Heaven what makes a soul heaven-bound. Adam pulls a list very swiftly out of his arse of three things that determine whether a soul is heaven-bound or not. These three things are to act selflessly, don't steal, and to stick it to the man. So, with the rules and regulations set in place, Heaven agrees to watch over Angel Dust to see whether his soul meets the requirements. So, the entire courtroom spies on Angel Dust having a night out in the pub with Sir Pentius, Cherry Bomb, Husk, and Nifty. And it's during these moments Angel Dust really proves that he's trying to redeem himself, make himself better than what he was, as we see him achieve all three of the things needed to get into heaven which sparks a huge debate as to why he's not already in heaven. And it's during this huge argument, Adam accidentally lets the other angels know about the cleansing. And so, with shit hitting the fan in every single direction, Vaggy and Charlie are sent back down to hell. Though, not before Adam reveals that Vaggy was once an executioner, giving them both just something to be super pissed about. Okay, well, that is all Hasbin Hotel has to offer at the minute. As of recording this, only episodes 1 to 6 have been released. I'm not sure how many episodes are actually going to be in the show, but as of right now, that's all it has. Yo, Brennan. What's up? The last two episodes just dropped. F- Okay then. So, 
since they were just released, episode 7, named Hello Rosie, sees Charlie making a deal with Alistair, which has me worried because he didn't really define what the deal was about. And so, Charlie, armed with the knowledge that Camilla Carmine has killed an angel, sends Vaggy off to go learn some more, while herself and Alistair head to Cannibal Town, where we meet Rosie, leader and overlord of Cannibal Town. Charlie's there to try and inspire the people of Cannibal Town to come help fight in the possible future war against heaven and hell. Initially, this goes quite poorly as she has other things on her mind, mainly the fact that Vaggy has been lying to her for three years about being an executioner. But after a wonderful heart-to-heart -heart between Charlie and Rosie, she gets her quote-unquote mocks back and is able to rally the people of Cannibal Town to fight by her side. During this time, Vaggy has gone to go see Camilla Carmine to ask how angels can even be killed. And it's during this we learn that angelic steel is the only thing that can kill an angel. We also have this really nice, almost training montage between Camilla and Vaggy, with Vaggy coming to accept that she herself is an angel, but is on the right side. And so the episode ends off with everyone back at the hotel fortifying it, ready for the future fight. And the songs in this episode are titled Out For Love and Ready For This. And so, episode 8. I literally just finished watching it, and oh my fucking god! Like, this show is actually good! <laughs> episode 8, titled The Show Must Go On, starts with Pentius doing his best Napoleon cosplay as they prepare for war against heaven. And after a not-so-rousing speech by Charlie, they decide to have one final night. Which unfortunately, again, means we have to sit through Sir Pentius's inability to riz. But we also see Charlie begin to break down as she's scared of what's to come and who may or may not make it. Where Vaggy comes in and helps her through it with a wonderful song titled More Than Anything, the reprised version. We then cut into the moment we've all been waiting for, WAR! The fight starts out with Alistair creating a force field around the hotel, dividing the angel's number. However, the force field doesn't last long as Adam breaks it down, allowing the full force to attack the hotel. Now that Adam and the rest of the angels can get into the fight, a 1v1 happens between Alistair and Adam. This is where I was personally hoping for the second song to come in, a mix of rock versus jazz. I just think that would have been really cool. But unfortunately, as the fight continues, Adam gets the upper hand and defeats Alistair, though he manages to quickly escape before being killed. Taking out Charlie's strongest hitter, Adam is now the biggest threat on the chessboard. So, Serpentius living up to his cosplay knows there is nothing we can do. So, after giving a final hoorah to Cherry Bomb, he sets off in his ship to go do a suicide quest against Adam. Oh, shit. Well, that didn't last long. So next up to go fight Adam is Charlie and Vaggy, which, again, doesn't last very long. God damn, Adam has just some OP bullshit on his side called <clears throat> plot armor. And because Adam is kicking ass, the two get split, Vaggy having to go fight loot. So Charlie powers up, ready to face Adam one on one. However, even with the power up, it's still not enough. And once again, Adam takes the upper hand until motherfucking Lucifer shows himself and Lucifer kicks Adam's ass. And so with Adam being defeated, the rest of the angels don't have much motivation to keep fighting. Adam on his last breath decides to curse out the demons, saying that they should all bow to him. He is the first man. He is the reason they all exist. And then, Nifty proceeds to stab him in the back a thousand times. <laughs> and so, the fight comes to a close. Triple Six News mentions everything that just happened to the residents of Hell. And so, Episode 8 begins to end, with everyone coming together to rebuild the hotel bigger and better, ready for Season 2. Though, not before we learn a little bit more about Alistair, and how he himself is also in a contract with someone. And so, 
that's the end of Has Been Hotel Season 1. I started reviewing when Episode 6 just came out. I expected maybe 12 episodes. But now I know that there is only 8 and we can put everything into one video. It feels amazing. And the show is amazing. So, yeah. That's Has Been Hotel.